Hello YouTube, how is everyone? It's Professional here. Today I want to do a review on the Chernobyl TV series. I'm going to try to keep this review spoiler free as much as I can, but I am warning everyone. There are a few scenes I do want to talk about to review the show fully. This is a TV series that launched earlier last month and dramatizes and tells the story of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster that happened on April 26, 1986. Even though this was a miniseries with just five episodes, it was the greatest TV show I have ever seen. There's a lot of junk on TV today, and I can't watch most of it. I barely watch TV because I don't like a lot of the shows, but this is one that I absolutely loved. The Chernobyl nuclear disaster happened when reactor number 4 exploded in the Chernobyl nuclear power plant near the city of Pripyat in the Soviet Union, modern day Ukraine. This is considered the worst nuclear disaster in human history. My mother remembers when this happened as well. She was from Poland and lived in the northeastern part of the country. A few days after the disaster, on May 1st, there was a communist parade and my mother, who was a school teacher, was forced to march in it. The government refused to cancel the parade, despite the dangers of the radiation cloud that spread across Europe. During the march, she felt very fatigued and was about to collapse. When she got home, she slept for over 24 hours. It was no coincidence that she was feeling ill a few days after the disaster. My mom was fine after that, but this was in Poland, which was hundreds of miles away. The area surrounding Chernobyl was hit the worst. The radiation cloud also entered Russia and affected many countries. Ukraine and Belarus, Belarus were hit the worst. If you are interested in learning about the disaster, I highly suggest you watch this show. The first episode of the show starts with a major spoiler. I don't want to reveal it, but it's something after the disaster. and. All of it, it gets put together as you watch the show and it makes sense at the end. Many people that know about Chernobyl, they unfortunately know about it because of the video game Call of Duty 4, and I guess that can be good and bad. It can be good that more people know about it at least, but it's bad in the sense that people playing the game don't realize just how bad the disaster actually was. In the game, they say 50,000 people used to live here when that was just a city. The real number of the evacuation was over 300,000 in the city and the surrounding area. And a lot of people, you know, that play the game, they make jokes about Pripyat and make jokes about Chernobyl. That's not cool. This was a very, very horrible disaster. A lot of people suffered. A lot of people died. There are people to this day that are still suffering from the effects. There are people that are sick, pe kids that weren't even alive at the time, that were born later with problems because of this disaster. The first episode shows the reactor exploding at 1 a.m. Deputy Chief Engineer Dyatlov, who was supervising a test that day, was in denial of how bad the situation was. He did not think the reactor exploded and was in complete denial of the situation. Plant workers that day followed his instructions and they were young or inexperienced. They were not aware of the test in advance. This show does not blame the workers in the plant as they tried their best, but it was incompetent leadership that pushed them and caused the disaster. The plant's director, Viktor Brukhanov, is woken up at 2 a.m. and told to meet up at an emergency committee meeting. He is joined by Nikolai Fomin, the chief engineer of the plant. During this speech, the committee seems largely unconcerned. They don't think it's more than a regular fire. One person speaks up, and that's Zarkov, a fictional character who is an elderly communist official. He gives a brief propaganda speech about nothing being bad, and then orders all phone lines cut and prevents anyone from leaving Pripyat, the neighboring city. Later, Stinikov arrives with meter, reading 200 rentgens, the max reading on the machine. He shows this to Fomin, Brukhanov, and Dyatlov, who are in denial. They claim the meter must be broken, and when Stinikov claims he saw graphite, Dyatlov goes into an angry rant that he didn't. At this point, Dyatlov becomes sick, gets taken away, and sees just what his incompetence has caused with all the sick people. I looked up the Russian reaction to the TV series, and most of the public loved it. Who didn't love it was the mass media in Russia. They called the show anti-Russian. I watched this whole show. I paid extremely close attention to it. I saw nothing anti-Russian in this show. This show heavily criticized the people who were responsible for the disaster and their failures to address the situation right at the start. These three characters are Fomin, Dyatlov, and Brukhanov. I looked up to see if these three guys were this incompetent, and based on witnesses and their actions, they were. Dyatlov threatened to fire people that day if they did not comply with his orders on the reactor, and Fomin and Brukhanov were perfectly fine with the test that night despite all the violations and safety protocols. There's a reason these people were tried after the disaster. When Stinikov reported to Fomin and Brukhanov that the readings were 200 rentgens, the max the machine could read, they dismissed him, saying the meter has to be faulty. That's how in denial they were. They refused to believe the reactor exploded and forced him to go up to the roof even when he didn't want to. That roof scene with Stinikov actually happened, and he died one month later. 
they would not go themselves up to the roof, but send others, and also others to the basement. They were responsible for these deaths. When Legasov the expert arrives and tells them how bad the situation is, they still refuse to believe it. Now this scene, I know that General Pikanov actually did volunteer to drive a truck with lead shielding in himself. When he returned, he announced it was not 3.6 Rontgens, but 15,000 Rontgens. I was not able to find out if Fomin and Brukhanov were actually there, but in the scene, they then shifted their tone and started blaming Dyatlov. This is how these people initially responded. If they would have evacuated the city right away, many more people could have possibly been saved. And the Soviet government was involved in trying to hide the disaster. They tried to downplay the events. I saw nothing anti-Russian here. The show wasn't attacking Russia or the Russian people, but instead what I saw here was a government that was so proud of itself, they refused to admit they made a mistake, refused to admit to the world about what had happened. When they finally admitted it, it was because the Scandinavian countries detected radiation. It spread that far away. If anyone tells me the Soviet government did not try to cover up, cover up the disaster, then I don't know what planet they're living on. This was a fact, and there was nothing anti-Russian about it. It showed the heroes working endlessly to stop the disaster and fighting against this bureaucracy and corruption that existed. We must not forget that this disaster, it did not happen in Russia, but in the Soviet Union at the time. And the region it happened in was Ukraine, and Ukraine and Belarus were right there in the middle of it. We also have to look at their reaction to the series, because I can bet you Ukrainian media and Belarusian media probably have a much different reaction to it than the Russian media. Right after the disaster happened, the firemen arrived on scene and had the idea that it was just a fire. These scenes, they were horrifying and hard to watch, but they were done perfectly because if you know the history, you know it's not a regular fire and what these people are standing next to and what they are breathing in and touching. One of the firemen picks up a piece of graphite from the reactor and then his hand starts burning. The fireman who the series focuses on was Vasily Ignatenko and his wife Ludmila Ignatenko, both real people. One thing I was scared the Chernobyl TV series would do is put a fictional romance scene in it. There are so many historical movies that have been ruined by these romance scenes. And there is some romance here, but not much, but it's good. It's perfectly fine and it's, it adds great variety to the show. Because the romance, it's based on real characters and the real story of Ludmilla. It was very tragic seeing what happened to a lot of these people at the plant and the firemen. It was horrible and hard to watch on what happened to them. At the end of the first episode, Professor Legasov, the main character played by Jared Harris, is called to a meeting with the committee at the Kremlin about the disaster. The second episode brings in the other two main characters. The first character is Ulana Komyuk, who is a nuclear physicist from Minsk. She detects radiation levels and then comes to the conclusion something terrible happened at Chernobyl. She is actually one of the main characters who is not real. The show tells you this as well. However, even though she was not a real person, she represents all the scientists that were involved in the cleanup of the disaster. The other character is Boris Sherbina, a top Communist Party official. At the start of the show, Boris is very stubborn and arrogant. He believes that there is no problem at Chernobyl until Legasov speaks up in front of Gorbachev, the leader of the Soviet Union. The acting in this show is absolutely amazing, especially their meetings with Gorbachev. You can see that Harris, who played Legasov, does a tremendous job. His character gets nervous when addressing Gorbachev. Gorbachev orders Legasov and Sherbina to assess the situation in Chernobyl. Sherbina is extremely unreasonable here, even asking Legasov to explain how a reactor works or how a soldier throw him out of the helicopter. Some people, they criticized this scene because they said it was unrealistic that something like this would happen in the USSR in the 1980s. I can see why some people feel this way. I mean, the USSR was not as gruesome in the 1980s as it was under Stalin. Things had calmed down over those decades, but still, this was a regime, a very authoritarian government, so we have to keep that in mind. Something like this could have happened, we don't know. It might have been just a bluff to get Legasov to start explaining. Regardless, that scene was unexpected and added a lot more life to the helicopter, but it gets crazier when they try to fly near the reactor and Legasov sees just how bad it is, saying, what have they done? He warns Sherbina, but he doesn't want to listen, and instead tells the pilot to fly us over, to which Legasov jumps into the cockpit and tells the pilot, we will all die if you do so. When I watched this, I hated Sherbina as a character at the start, because he represented the bureaucratic government that was unwilling to admit how bad the situation was. However, Sherbina had massive character development. He went from being an unreasonable, arrogant character to becoming understanding and very helpful. When he firsthand witnessed how bad the disaster was, his tone changed and he realized he needed Legasov. He listened to him and gave him whatever he needed. His best scene is in the fourth episode. As they are clearing graphite from the roof using German robots to do so, one of the robots randomly fails. 
The reason the robot failed was because the Soviet government gave them the propaganda number of 2,000 Ronkins when it was really around 15,000. Sherbina was enraged, screaming on the phone. This was tremendous acting and the best performance by Stellan Skarsgård. There is also a scene with the KGB in a few episodes, which was a Soviet security agency or the Soviet CIA, as many people like to call them. Some people say their roles were over-exaggerated, but I disagree. The Soviet government was trying hard to downplay how bad Chernobyl actually was. The KGB would have been involved in the secrecy. I could definitely see them threatening and intimidating people. You have to remember, this was an agency where many people in the past decades were murdered by and disappeared and never heard from again. These guys were scary, so they would definitely be involved. In the second and third episode, it shows the three volunteers who went into the basement to drain the water. This scene is absolutely scary, and scarier than any horror nonsense that you can watch on TV or at the movies. The reason this is scarier than anything else is because this was real. This really happened. They had to shut off the valves, or it could cause a giant steam explosion, and this would have blown up the whole plant, and the disaster would have been ten times worse. That radiation would have spread further, and it would have been even more deadly. All of Ukraine and Belarus and other countries would have to be evacuated never to be able to return again. Hundreds of miles would have been uninhabitable. I don't want to talk further about this scene, but it captures a very important part. These three men basically volunteered to sacrifice themselves, going to this extremely irradiated basement to shut off the valves. You will have to watch the show or read the history to find out what happened here. There is also the hundreds of coal miners who were brought in to dig a tunnel underneath the reactor to stop it from contaminating the groundwater. The water could have been contaminated all the way from the Pripyat River to the Black Sea. This tells their story, and the story of many of these people that saved us, saved Europe, prevented this disaster. Unfortunately though, a lot of them did not live long lives afterward. The fourth episode focuses on the liquidators involved in helping after the disaster. Hundreds of thousands of people were drafted into the military and other civil jobs to assist with the disaster. In the fourth episode, the main character is Pavel, a college kid who was drafted into the army. He has never served before, and from his behavior, you can tell he has never even held a gun before. I tried to look up if Pavel was a real person, and I read one article which claimed he was based off a real person, but I was unable to find any more information on it. This episode was very different from the others, as it focused on what the soldiers had to do. Pavel was sent to Bacho's unit, who is a Soviet Afghan veteran. I like how they made references to the war, because at this time, the Soviet Union was at war in Afghanistan, and a lot of the liquidators were veterans of that war. Pavel's squad has to put down animals that have become contaminated as a result of the disaster. They have to go door to door shooting cats, dogs, and other animals. Pavo can't bring himself to do it, but eventually starts shooting them until one scene almost breaks him, where he finds a bunch of puppies hiding in a building. It was such a hard thing to watch, but they had to do it. These animals were already dead. They were contaminated. They were going to spread the radiation sickness. Pavo had a short time on screen, shorter than most of the other main characters, only appearing at the end of the third episode for a moment, and most of the fourth episode. The fourth episode also shows the roof cleanup, and it being cleared of graphite. Graphite is what the rods were made out of in the reactor. And the same thing the firemen picked up. These are extremely dangerous rocks, highly radioactive. If you touch this, you are dead. They had to clear them off the roof to build the sarcophagus to enclose the reactor to pre prevent any more radiation from leaking out. Each team had 90 seconds on the roof, and the scene was exactly 90 seconds, and it's very accurate to the actual footage of the roof clearing. The final episode focuses on the trial of the three responsible for the reactor explosion that day. It actually shows minute by minute what happened that night in the control room. This is my favorite episode by far. All three characters come together to give their testimony against these three, Dyatlov, Fomin, and Brukhanov. There is one scene here which is the best scene between Legasov and Sherbina, and it's during a recess in between the court sessions. Boris calls Legasov Valera instead of Valery. And I read that people said this is a very formal way to pronounce Valerie by close friends and family. They did an amazing job with Sherbina developing him as a character and it shows what you can do with a character in just five episodes. We started off hating him but ended up loving him as one of the best characters on the show. Harris's performance as Legasov in the final courtroom scene is my favorite part of the whole series. I don't want to spoil what happens here but if you know the real history you know what happens to the three responsible for the disaster. And it's not just them. Far more people should have been prosecuted who were involved in the faulty designs of the reactor and covering it up. I love this series, and I could rewatch it a second time all over again because it's just that good.
The best part about this series is not the series itself, but the fact that more people are now interested in the, looking up the Chernobyl disaster. Documentaries and videos on the Chernobyl disaster have been up on YouTube for years. They've had a huge spike in views recently, and it's because of the TV show. People are more interested in the real history. It has brought more awareness to the public. This disaster could have been 10 times worse if not for the heroic efforts of the people involved in stopping the disaster and clearing it up. Most of Europe could have been destroyed, uninhabitable. In high school and college, I took so many history classes and I learned about the Cold War several times. And not once did they bring up the Chernobyl disaster. You would think the worst nuclear disaster in human history would have been brought up, but it wasn't. The only time I heard about it before was when it was mentioned in chemistry class in 12th grade for a brief moment. More people should know about this and how dangerous a nuclear disaster could actually be. A video game is not a good source of information, and people that joke about it based on the game have no idea how bad the disaster actually was. I hope that the TV series is something that generations later will watch. I hope this is a show that they show in schools and colleges that we watch 20, 30 years from now. Well, there are a few scenes that are not historically accurate, like the date of the helicopter crash. The helicopter crash actually did happen months later. It does show the heroic efforts of those involved in clearing up the disaster, saving Europe, and fighting against government bureaucracy and corruption that did not want to admit the truth and cared more about its public image than the safety of its land and people. And what is the final verdict on Chernobyl? I give it a perfect 10 out of 10. The research they did was amazing, the actors did a tremendous job, and it highlighted the worst nuclear disaster in human history. If this TV show and the actors do not get an award for their performance and creating this masterpiece, then it will truly show just how out of touch Hollywood is and the nonsense they choose to nominate for awards. I hope that you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, drop a like. If you're new to my channel and enjoy my content, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.